everyone my name is Heather and welcome to the channel bookable so this is a video series that I do every now and then it's Instagram recommendations it's nothing new I did not come up with it whatsoever it's something that I've just seen Pretty much where you go on Instagram and you say hey ask me for specific recommendations like enemies to lovers set in London brothers best friends foodie books you get it and you guys delivered so I'm gonna be answering some of your specific recommendations in case you're looking for a book that fits this particular mood got you covered so let's get into it because there's a lot first up enemies to lovers i always get that the most like out of all of them it's always enemies to lovers and i've done several videos on my channel and i will continue to do them because the romance you read the more romance you want to recommend with particular tropes enemies to lovers is my favorite trope so one i could think of that i love the simple wild by katie tucker love it great enemies to lovers set in alaska another one i always recommend that's underrated is kiss my cupcake by helena hunting um it's super fun both great enemies to lovers with some steam love them and i have more enemies to lovers i could do a whole list of them like i've done them i'm just gonna try to be simple for these next two for this video next up i have books taking place on a cruise ship <laughs> Any chance to talk about the last one by Will Dean, I will gladly do so. It's all about a woman that goes on a cruise trip, cruise ship, trip, <laughs> um, with her boyfriend, and then she wakes up the next day, and she's the only one on the ship, and it gets cuckoo bananas from there. A phenomenal book. Another one, surprise, surprise, is the Ruth Ware book. My only Ruth Ware book I've actually really liked, and that is The Woman in Cabin 10, again, taking place on a very small cruise ship. The last one, like, full-blown cruise ship. The Woman in Cabin 10 is like a very smaller one, I would say, but it's a Mr. Ruth Ware that's actually really good and probably the only Ruth Ware you're going to hear me recommend on the show. <laughs> Next up is Hockey Romance and oh, let me tell you about the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. And if you haven't heard about it, now you have. It is a great one where each different book in this series focuses on a different sport. The first book in this series is Mile High. It is all about the hockey's Chicago's hockey's bad boy with um getting with the flight attendant that they're on a private jet and they kind of mash heads and it's really steamy and adorable I'm gonna do a sports romance video soon because I've realized I've actually read a plethora of them and I want to kind of dissect it into each different sport but this is a great hockey romance book for sure Next up is family drama. Oh, who doesn't love those? One I could think of immediately was Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena. This is one that the more I think about it, it was interesting. It was kind of like Knives Out, but really, really not. It's got the family drama of Knives Out. It's basically about a family where one of the parents ends up dead and they're trying, all the siblings are like, who did it? One of us did it. All that kind of stuff. It's very full of high school. It's very full of family drama hands down 100 another one that's very family drama is the inheritance game by jennifer lynn barnes this is a y book that again is very similar to knives out it's about a girl that learns that she becomes rich and she's been given this mansion to a guy that she has no clue who about trying to figure out like why is this girl taking our inheritance what's going on trust me it's full of family drama it's fun i liked it Taylor Swift vibes. Well, you asked at the right exact time because the breakup tour by Emily Wiberly and Osman Sigma Broca just came out and I just read it this month. And this is so clearly Taylor Swift. Like it is inspired by Taylor Swift. It's pretty much about Taylor Swift. You know, kind of not. It's like, I mean, like, hello this is about a character named Riley Wynn who is a famous you guessed it singer and she is going on tour she's made herself famous with her breakup album and basically her ex-husband's claiming that her one big song all too well is about him when really it's not it's about her college sweetheart and so she goes to visit him and be like hey can you set the record straight? I don't want him to get the spotlight anymore. It was about you. And he's like, look, I'll do it, but only if I can come on tour with you and play the piano. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's fairly obvious. It's, it's told from both their point of views. They're so clearly in love with each other. But this is like, if you want anything Taylor Swift vibes, please read this book. It will have you very much in the Taylor Swift, T-Swift vibes. Like, I'm a fan of Taylor Swift. I'm not like a Swifty, I would call myself. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. We have a rom-com that made you laugh. And actually, it's the rom-con. <laughs> Get that? By Devin Daniels. I actually just finished this one, and it was super cute. If you love 
um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, please read this book. It's all about a character named Cassidy who gets broken up with and she's, she works at this site called Siren. It's kind of like Andy Anderson where she works and she writes articles and she comes up with this idea from her like 90 year old grandmother of how they date in the 1950s and she gets this list of like how to snag a man and so she decides she's gonna do it and then she's actually gonna snag the guy that's like opposing to her work called Brawler. It's like a man site and all that stuff. I mean, it is so clearly inspired by How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, but it was funny. It was super cute. It was, it's, you know, best not to take it too seriously, but it's one that made me laugh and I enjoyed it. Sad but scary thriller horror book. You know me, I'm gonna have to say How to Sell a Haunted House. I've talked about this a lot, how it's a super scary book, but also very emotional. And that's all I'll say about it. So if you want sad but scary, this one's for you. I like this one. It says adult fantasy that's not A Court of Thorns and Roses or Fourth Wing. <laughs> I got you. A Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadband. I liked it more than Fourth Wing. It's a vampire fantasy with some steam that is amazing. I don't love the sequel really at all, but the first one, Chef's Kiss, amazing. If you want an amazing adult fantasy, read this one. Also, if you're looking for something a little bit different, A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I will say this is very info dumpy. If you've read Naomi Novik before, she go like it's it takes a lot to read her books i'm not gonna lie to you while i love this book i would not read it again because it's kind of just it's a lot it's basically about a magic school and a girl that's kind of destined for evil and all that kind of stuff it's fun it's just a lot so you know these are two that are not akatar fourth wing so you're welcome <laughs> also while we're kind of on that the inheritance of rakita divina is kind of fantasy as well and i loved it does not get talked about at all why i don't know book about grief or the recovery process of grief now one that i love and always always talk about is float plan by trish dollar i love this book it's about a girl named anna who lost her fiance he took his own life and she decides to honor his memory by going on this boat ride they always plan to do and she realizes that she is not coordinated enough to do it and so she hires this boat guy named keen who's also going through his own stuff it's a beautiful book about grief that will make you laugh and make you cry and it's just about the journey she has to go on with grief another one that is great for that is the happy ever after playlist by by abby jimenez that i love it's about another character that loses her fiance and she's kind of finding love again learning to rebuild herself through this tragedy and both are amazing books about grief now grief is very subjective you could be going through grief in a different way than another person could but these are two books that i really enjoy that i think do cover the grief process well again that is subjective a thriller set in summer another category i love i do videos on this as well but my all-time favorite that i talk about every year if i can find it the night swim by megan golden this is about a podcaster that goes to this beachside town and murders happen it's a great summer one also another really great one that's set in the summer is the last time i lied by riley sager taking place at a summer camp look they're both blue for water summer i don't know <laughs> closed door fade to black pretty much clean romances with no steam. Um, honestly, any Sarah Adams book will do. Um, I do love the cheat sheet by her. I also love her first one, When in Rome. Also, Carrie Winfrey does some great closed door romances. My favorite of hers is Better Than the Movie. No. What is it called? It's better, it's not, <laughs> I forget the title of it, I'm horrible. But here's a picture of it right here, I love it. Any of Sarah Adams or Carrie Winfrey are great closed door romances. Any books that have animals, especially dogs. Oh, hello, you've come to the right place. I'm a dog lover and I'm also a fan of, if you have dogs on the cover, they best be in the book because that's false advertisement. Well, I have You Lucky Dog by Julia London, a great fun one that is basically about a people that come home and their dogs get walked by a dog walker and they both have basset hounds and realize that this is not my basset hound. The dog walker mixed them up so they have to meet up together and you get the gist. It was super cute, super, super fun and more importantly, dogs are on the cover and they're in the book, my friend. A book set in Europe. For this one, I'm gonna go with Paris is Always a Good Idea by Jen McKinley. This one is about a woman that does not really happy with her life. She lost her mom and so she's trying to discover herself and so she decides to go on this trip that she did when she was younger where she went to three different places. She went to Ireland, France, and Italy and the girl fell in love three times. She's like I'm gonna revisit these guys and see if one of them is meant to be and so clearly it's set in Europe. It's super fun, super romantic and I loved it. 
Then we have Best Friend's Brother. For this one, my favorite Best Friend's Brother is Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. This is about a girl that's been in love with her Best Friend's Brother for forever, and it's super steamy and um, super fun, honestly. Um, deeply romantic books can have any level of spice. For me, my most deeply romantic books that I've read um, recently have got to be The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Also, I would say The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Miranda Zapata is deeply romantic. Like, it's a very slow burn one, but it's deeply romantic in my opinion. Another one that I love and adore, Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Probably my favorite, like, deeply romantic book. It gets a lot of hype, so you probably have already heard about it, but I love it. And that is all of the ones I'm going to answer today, because if not, I would be here forever. Like I said, this is a series, so rest assured I'll be doing this again sometime in the near future. But nevertheless, I hope you got a new recommendation out of this, because that is the goal, is to give you recommendations for books that you may love. So hopefully I did my job. Please, hopefully I did. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.